Hey, Cycle 1 and Cycle 2 TPAers, welcome or welcome back to TPA Cafe. This is our Real Talk series, and this is one of our last videos in the Real Talk series for the moment, where I'm taking you through how to write very effective, highly fabulous annotations. And this, I just want to say this example, while it is fantastic and mind blowing, was not written by me. This was written by a colleague of mine who was a former TPA coordinator and she did a fantastic job with it. And I know she won't mind me sharing it with you. So a couple of things to remember when you are writing annotations. So you have a thousand characters as a limit per annotation title. So it's not a thousand characters for total for all annotations. It's each annotation title, each annotation you do has a thousand character limit. So you want to stay within that limit, obviously, like you want to stay within the limits of all every limit that's set for you with the TPA. You don't want to go over anything that's the maximum, obviously. So a couple of really important things when you are annotating, and I've mentioned this in another video where you may have at your university and your teacher ed program, Maybe you use a program like Athena where you are uploading your TPA videos and annotating into the platform. Some programs do not have such a thing. So you can just do it just like this where you annotate on a Word doc or a Google doc, and then you want to save your annotations and then copy and paste them into Pearson when you upload. But a great way to do this is to, because you're going to be pulling your annotation titles from a drop down menu, but it's fine. You can obviously here in the word document, we don't have such a thing. So you're going to write your annotation title. These are cycle one annotation titles, just so you know. Um, but if you're a cycle two candidate, you've already done this. So you probably already know, but say it's going to be exactly the same thing for cycle one or cycle two. So you have your annotation title here. And then you have your timestamp where this teacher move is taking place, where this annotation title is taking place. This instructional strategy, whatever it is that you are annotating, um, you want to timestamp where that's taking place. And I've already mentioned this, but there is a condition code that you can get. You could get a condition code if your timestamp spans, for example, the full length of your video or like an enormous section of your video that's that far surpasses where this teacher move is taking place. And so you want to make sure that your timestamp is, is, is specific and targeted as possible for where you are doing this specific teacher move. So where, where you're creating a positive learning environment, it should be like this, how you're doing this, where, where it takes place in your video. If it takes place more than once, you can do, you know, another annotation if you want, but you just want to make sure that your timestamp is really mapping to where this is taking place. And then we have the characters here. And then this is what the annotation, the full annotation would look like. The, obviously it's almost a thousand characters. Now here, this is just me, TPA friends. If I have a thousand characters to write an annotation and I write like one line, I, I, I'm just saying, I don't feel like that's gonna show the assessors that I am thinking through my annotations deeply. So if you have a thousand characters, while you don't need to use all thousand characters, I certainly, I would, I would highly recommend that you do write an in-depth, very metacognitive, intentional, this is what I'm doing and this is why I'm doing it annotation. So this is what it would look like when it's written, um, the full, when the full annotation is written, but let's break it on down. So the three parts to this particular annotation are the what. So what is it that you're doing? Obviously you're doing whatever your annotation title is, but you're describing what you're doing. So what is the reviewer going to see or the assessor going to see in the clip? Um, what annotation title will be evident? So to support students' sense of belonging within the classroom, the students greet one another individually to show that they are recognized as a member of the learning environment. This routine was intentionally set to minimize threats and distractions in the classroom following UDL guidelines. Okay, that's a very thorough what. And then we have the why. So why is this an example of the annotation title? Why is it that you're doing this? Greeting each individual by name shows students that their presence is important and recognized in the classroom. In the small group, it also fosters relationships between the members within the classroom community. By taking the time to say hello to each individual student, an inclusive and caring learning environment is established. Again, a very thorough why. And then thirdly, this is what backs us up as a good teacher decision. 
So this is just the extra cherry on top if you wanna add a little shine to your annotation. So this is especially important for FS3 as she can tend to retreat from participating in the lesson. And this routine of greeting each other at the beginning of the lesson helps to draw her in. When students feel a part of a positive and safe learning environment, they are more likely to engage in the content and build a respectful rapport with one another. So all together, this is what this annotation looks like. And it's just incredibly in depth. It's very metacognitive around like, why are you doing it? Why, how is it gonna benefit my students? In this case, also how is it gonna benefit um, FS3? It's just, it's a full, complete, in my mind, excellent annotation. And then we have another example here, which is also a cycle one annotation, but again, the same thing applies to cycle two annotations. So explaining connections to prior learning and establishing expectations for content specific learning. So here's the timestamp. Obviously the timestamp is the, it's just an example of a timestamp. It's exactly the same as the one above. Um, so you would change it based on the annotation title, but here's the full annotation. And then here's how we're gonna break it down. So we're gonna do the what, so what the assessor is gonna see in the clip, which annotation title will be evident. I connect to prior knowledge by asking students to recall what they learned the day before. I restate yesterday's learning goal and review an example from their homework about building numbers using place value blocks. I review base 10 blocks and how we should talk about them. Is there a direct relationship between the last lesson where they colored in base 10 blocks and the current lesson where they will use online images of blocks. Additionally, I point out a sentence stem and academic language I want them to use in this lesson, which was introduced in the last lesson. For example, my number has blank tens and blank ones. So very, very thorough. Again, what, why, like, why is this an example of this? Why are you doing this? Why are you making these specific teacher decisions? Directly connecting to the prior lesson shows students that we are building on understandings of what they already have, which elicits confidence and creates connection between their learning from lesson to lesson. This is so much what you need to be doing in particularly in that the well, this is mainly going to be in like video one, for example, but connecting to the prior lesson is absolutely imperative in both cycles one and two. And so really going through that why piece is going to be vital. And then what backs this up is a good teacher decision. This fits in with the, the constructivist theory of learning, which asserts that new information is best learned when it's connected to existing knowledge and understanding. Again, this is you know, this is the, the cherry on top of an annotation. I would guess that, you know, the majority of candidates are not probably talking about research and theory. You don't need to. The, you know, if you just had the, the first two parts, it would still be a very strong annotation. But, you know, if you have like, if you're doing higher order thinking and you want to add, you know, well, this is connecting to Bloom's taxonomy, you know, level four of Bloom's taxonomy. It's higher order thinking because of this. Um, this is, that's obviously for, if you're, when you're talking about higher order thinking, not this, not this annotation title, but using like a Bloom's taxonomy or Webb's depth of knowledge, Karen Hess's cognitive rigor matrix and how that is the higher order thinking. And you're explaining how, you know, it's higher order thinking. That's just a great thing to talk about, um, in your annotation. You could also talk about that in like the why, but, um, so these two can kind of flow together, but this is an example of an incredibly strong annotation, two incredibly strong annotations, um, and really how to break them down and, you know, feel free obviously to watch this video as many times as you need to see how to craft these annotations step by step. This is a video that many of you have asked for. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, you can always, um, add your questions to the YouTube video below and I will do my best to answer all of your questions, but I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give this video a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel or share with someone that you think will find this useful. And I'll see you all again in another video.